So I thought let's take a look at a conversation that happened last night on YouTube. Let's see um, the things that we can pick up from it, take from it to learn going forward. And a lot of it, to be honest, is really simple stuff, but it requires a lot of self-work, okay? And trust and believe, I am no perfect person to be judging people. If I could show you some of the chapters of my life story, Christ, okay, Christ. Okay, I am not perfect. I, I just have learned pretty much to fine-tune when I can feel my ego kicking in, okay? And I've learned over time to notice it at the earliest, earliest stage when I first start feeling that or the first ever steps of when anger starts creeping in, okay? Or, um, what else? The defensiveness, okay? I have learned to talk that back down, okay? And it sounds... Well, whatever it sounds like, but I have learned to talk it back down and remain in the self because it's my ego that starts getting annoyed if digs come up. OK, I have learned this is one thing about narcissists that is um, it's a gift, OK, that they give us. Now, I am not saying in any way, shape or form that these people are good. All right. But they do leave us with a gift once they've left us. If you're insightful enough or you're, I don't know, if you're interested enough in understanding how you got led down that path for so long, okay? I think our own curiosity, if we're not really that interested in understanding what happened, then obviously we're not going to look any further in it. But the narcissist leaves us, I would call it a gift, okay? And that's not to say that it's any anything good that they leave us with. But what they leave us with is... The narcissist teaches us all about our own triggers, okay? The ways in which we react, the narcissist mirrors those back to us, all right? So when the narcissist is using psychological warfare to get us to react or blow up or they're trying to wear us down to the point where we're that frustrated, we blow up because all the time a narcissist is working on annihilating your patience, annihilating your kindness, annihilating your compassionate side and annihilating your empathy that's what they work on they want the ugly side to come out they want to get you out of your character okay because once they get you out of your character they get to turn around and say <laughs> look at her look what she does she's a she's a bully she's a cyber bully she, she bullies people and the words that you have used you know, some of the words that come out of our mouth, some of the things that we say in the heat of the moment. I don't want to get to the heat of the moment. So for me, I'm not going to allow someone to bring me to the heat of the moment. <clears throat> the narcissist, when we flip out and react, if we analyse and fine tune those emotions that, that come out of us, okay, if we really dissect them and take a, a really good look at them, we can learn how to stop that happening again because the narcissist picks up on our um wounds pretty much okay so if you've got an issue with um so like if you've been an addict okay the narcissist is excellent at reading people so if you haven't fully forgiven yourself about everything that comes with addiction and having to um get into recovery okay the narcissist will spot that within you and use it, twist it, and use it against us. If you have issues with um, a parent's death, for example, the narcissist sees that and uses that to fuck with us, basically, okay? If those wounds are healed with inside, okay, and we're at peace with them, they can't be used against us. That's the secret. That's the nar that's what the narcissist mirrors back to us. All our unhealed wounds, okay? Because if they were healed, right, and if they were fixed, pretty much nobody would have the ability to use those against us because the fixed and healed, and if the fixed and healed were like this, we're calm, we're at peace, we understand, um, we've worked through whatever the grief was or whatever the self-hate was or the self-shame the narcissist picks up on any embarrassment we, we may feel about certain things that have happened in our life they're very good at pulling out okay 
areas that are sensitive to us. So it's important when you know that you're dealing with one that you understand that your sensitivities are picked up on immediately. It's the pathological intuition. Okay, we all have this intuition. Not many of us bother to work on it and fine tune that and, you know, get it up to, you know, like a, a good level where, where we do pick up accurate red flags. We pick up on vibes and we pick up early on that the person that we're getting to know possibly isn't a good person. Okay. If those, those things that the narcissist mirrors back, there are weak spots. They are our weak spots. That's what they teach us. Every time a narcissist or a toxic person comes at you and uses a sensitivity and that sensitivity gets you to react, okay? That's what needs healing or fixing with inside you. That's the secret, okay? Say like if someone was to come at me, um, say about my family, all right? I'm at peace with those wounds inside. So it wouldn't bother me somebody picking at that or trying to use it to their advantage to get one over on me okay if somebody tried to use a trauma that i've been through okay sa for example um while i may not be over that mentally psychologically and within my soul so to speak i've healed that in the way of it can't be used against me okay if someone wanted to use my looks against me okay i've accepted the way i look i am at peace with it all right i may not i may still have issues you know when i'm getting ready wish you look different wish that but the ultimate core inside is healed okay this is how i look it's tough okay i will not be triggered or ha I, don't, I, don't, I just don't have a sensitivity about it anymore i've healed i've gone back looked at all those wounds that I had and healed them, okay? I've looked at them and reframed them and made them, made myself be at peace with them, okay? Because I've explored where it's all coming from and put it to bed in a healthy manner. So nobody later can come down the path and start picking up on all these sensitivities and be able to use them against me. I work on mastering those reactions and those triggers that a toxic person or a narcissist sets off within me, okay? And I know it sounds boring and it's all like, oh, shut up, you know, I can handle it my way. Your ego and your cruelty, anything that you can bring forth that you think is going to blow the narcissist away or the toxic individual it's not going to work. They live for that. That's what they do every single day. It's learned behavior. Pick up on people's sensitivities, twist them around and use them to get a reaction. Okay. It's learned behavior. They can't be any different. For me, if there would be a narcissist around me, okay, I have understood on a deeper level the capabilities of a narcissist, all right? They aren't capable of certain things and it's important that you acknowledge their capabilities and their lack of being capable to grasp the things we want them to grasp trying to force one or push one or corner one or bully one or manipulate one or harass one trying to do all of those things to get one to behave as you want them to do you're not accepting what you're dealing with you're not accepting it. You're still thinking through your ego, this person is not going to get the best of me. I am going to wipe the floor with them and I am going to show them who's boss. That's your ego. Now, if you were sat within yourself, okay, normal self, you can recognize that that person has certain capabilities and certain areas that they are incapable of. It's healthier for me that I recognize this person isn't capable of A, B and C. So I'm going to leave them alone. I'm not going to place that expectation on that person. And I think a lot of us around YouTube, we place this expectation on people that may be or show problematic traits. And instead of 
accepting them we keep placing this expectation and trying to push them or force them to see things the way we want them to see them okay it's unrealistic and it takes us out of our character we become cruel and this is where the transference comes in again because once the narcissist or the toxic individual gets us to um gets us to engage gets us to step into ground zero and engage them once we do that we're playing their game all right and it's better if you are going to play the game with a narcissist that you understand their capabilities and the areas of which their minds they just cannot go so if you're trying to get one to understand your feelings and your point of view or point out that i don't agree with how you handled this i don't agree with what you did with that and you're being met with doubling down behavior or tripling down behavior or the self-victimization okay you need to recognize this person is shifting accountability that's what shifting accountability looks like using different tactics to get out of the way of acknowledging what you want them to acknowledge they just keep blame shifting then they'll start with the misdirection well what about this and what about that and you didn't say anything when that happened but you didn't say anything when that happened but you did this but you were doing that okay they're having you chase the conversation round and using misdirection and blame shifting to avoid the accountability that you want them to take you're probably going to get amped up and stressed trying to force this person to take accountability okay they're incapable of being accountable it hurts them okay it wounds them they don't like it they feel copious amounts of shame all right toxic shame not just like the shame we feel when somebody shames us or when you may have been shamed as a child they feel horrendous toxic shame that is what they're running from that's why they can't be accountable so trying to force one to acknowledge the issue that you've got with them right you are wasting your time and until you recognize that you are going to keep banging your head against a brick wall and they are going to transfer their traits onto you because then you're probably going to start going to different ways to try and get at this person you're probably going to start calling them names you're probably going to try and pick up on sensitivities they may have and throw them in the face you're probably going to start picking at them about their job or their lifestyle all right and there we are the transference has occurred before our eyes we are now being as shady and as nasty as what this toxic individual is doing. We must stay in the self. I know it sounds boring, okay, but you have to stay in the self. Stop reaching and going into that ego, okay? I think this is kind of a rant. Don't know I'm going to put this together. But I'm going to take a look at the drama that happened last night, jump into that and see if we can learn anything, okay? Thank you for watching. Bye for now.